This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 435471-2. We encourage your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by October 7th, 2021, 14 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. This public meeting is being recorded, and the presentation is available on the project's webpage. The Florida Department of Transportation is required to comply with various non-discrimination laws and regulations including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720 by phone at 386-943-5367 or email at jennifer.smith, the number two, that's J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R dot S-M-I-T-H and the numeral two at D-O-T dot state dot F-L dot U-S. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, the state title six coordinator by mail at 605 Swanee Street, mail station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399. By phone at 850-414-4753 or email at Jacqueline.Paramore, and that's J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E dot P-A-R-A-M-O-R-E at D-O-T dot state dot F-L dot U-S. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location on the project website and in the meeting notifications. This public meeting was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's public notice website, the Sumter County Times, on social media, and on the project website. In addition, adjacent property owners, interested individuals, elected and appointed officials, and government agencies were also notified about this public meeting. Let's take a look at the background of this project and the proposed South Sumter Connector Trail. The South Sumter Connector Trail is just one small element of the shared use non-motorized or Sun Trail Network. The Sun Trail Network was initiated through governor and legislative support and includes existing and proposed trails across the state of Florida. The Coast, the Coast Trail, which the South Sumter Connector Trail is a part of, was identified in 2015 as the first Sun Regional Trail. It extends approximately 250 miles across Florida from the Gulf of Mexico and St. Petersburg to the Atlantic Ocean and Titusville. The Coast to Coast Trail is a non-motorized paved multi-use trail, meaning that it provides accommodations for all users wishing to walk, bike, or roll. Now we're in our focus to this project, the South Sumter Connector Trail. The first work dates back to 2015 with the Florida Department of Transportation conducting a feasibility study that was completed in June of 2016. The study included 39 meetings across an 18 month period, a public meeting, which took place on May 7th, 2015, three additional public meetings that took place between March and April of 2016. And these meetings established primary considerations for stakeholders and examined five different trail alignments. The Florida Department of Transportation then conducted a Project Development and Environment Study, or PD&E, for the South Sumter Connector Trail from June 2017 through June 2019. The study determined the social, economic, natural, and physical impacts of the project, combining engineering, environmental, planning data, and community feedback. During this time, several trail paths were investigated and considered. 
A public meeting was held on October 23rd, 2018 at Webster Community Hall to allow for the public to provide input on their preferred alternatives. After completion of the study, the trail location was identified to close a gap in the Coast to Coast Trail, which connects users from the Gulf of Mexico to the Atlantic Ocean. After additional planning and received community feedback, it was decided that the South Sumter Connector Trail would serve as a spur trail connecting Webster to State Road 50. The proposed sections along County Road 478 have been moved south to run along State Road 50. With the trail alignment determined, Design of the South Sumter Connector Trail began in June of 2019 and will continue through the spring of 2022. Tonight's public meeting is being held to inform you of the proposed changes and to obtain public feedback. The South Sumter Connector Trail will be a spur element of the Coast to Coast Trail in Sumter County. It is located along the western side of State Road 471 from the intersection of State Road 50 to County Road 478 in the city of Webster. There are three general sections to the project where the trail and roadway take on three different layouts. The first begins at State Road 50 and continues to the city of Webster, just north of the County Road 478A intersection. Within this section, the shared youth path is 10 feet wide and approximately 15 feet to the west of the southbound travel lane of State Road 471. The second section takes place from the southern limits of the city of Webster to Central Avenue. The 10 foot wide trail is about four feet from the back of the curb along State Road 471. Additionally, the trail will connect to an existing crosswalk across State Road 471 in front of Webster Elementary School. The final section runs from Central Avenue to County Road 478. This section is similar to the previous section. However, there are several additional improvements taking place within these limits. The on-street parking will be removed along the southbound portion of the roadway and the travel lanes along State Road 471 will be adjusted to an 11 foot width. This will provide enough space to accommodate a 10 foot trail, four feet from the back of the curb along State Road 471. This section from Central Avenue north to County Road 478 will also be repaved following the reconstruction of the Western Curb. Driveways along the entire State Road 471 corridor will be improved and paved. FDOT representatives will be reaching out directly to speak with property owners in the coming months to discuss this improvement. Intersections throughout will also feature reconstructed pedestrian curb ramps to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA. Additionally, the intersection of State Road 471 and Central Avenue will feature a signalized pedestrian crosswalk with a rectangular rapid flashing beacon. A rectangular rapid flashing beacon, or RRFB, consists of two rapid flashing yellow lights that are mounted below a yellow pedestrian crossing sign. The flashing light remains dark until they are activated by a pedestrian wishing to cross. While motorists are legally required to stop for pedestrians in any crosswalk in the state of Florida, RRFBs are installed to bring more visibility to the marked crosswalk to help pedestrians who need to cross. Let's take a look at how a pedestrian will interact with the RRFB. Upon approaching the crosswalk, the beacon will be dark and cars will be proceeding normally. Pedestrians are encouraged to push the button to activate the beacon, thus making their intent to cross more noticeable to motorists. Upon pressing the button to activate the signal, pedestrians may enter the crosswalk when motorists have come to a complete stop or if no traffic is present closer than a safe stopping distance. Pedestrians will notice the flashing yellow lights or supplemental lights on the side of the RRFB to let them know the device has been activated. The flashing lights on the beacon will continue for a short time, allowing pedestrians to cross. Finally, after pedestrians have completed crossing and the RRFB has stopped flashing, any approaching pedestrians will have to press the button again to activate the RRFB 
repeating the cycle. Now let's take a look at how motorists will interact with the RRFB. The RRFB's default state is dark until a pedestrian presses the button across. The motorist may proceed with caution if no pedestrians are in the crosswalk. Once a pedestrian presses the button, indicating they're ready to cross, the yellow lights begin to flash rapidly. The motorist must stop or clear the crossing if they are too close to stop safely. Motorists must remain stopped while pedestrians cross. The beacon will continue to flash and motorists may proceed once the pedestrians clear their lane. Finally, the beacons will return to dark and motorists may proceed with traffic when there are no pedestrians in the crosswalk. The beacon will remain dark until a new pedestrian approaches the crossing and presses the button. Moving forward, design of the trail and associated improvements are expected to be finished in spring of 2022 at an estimated cost of $2 million. Project improvements will be constructed in the existing right-of-way and driveways along the project limits will be harmonized with the trail to meet grade. Construction is anticipated to begin in spring of 2023 at an estimated cost of $5.5 million. We encourage your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by October 7th, 2021, 14 days after the public meeting will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. For those in attendance at the in-person location, you may speak to our project staff on the floor or complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. If you are participating online, you may submit written questions or comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 43 Five four seven one dash two. You may also email your comments and questions to the project manager directly at jude.jeanfrancois, and that's J U D E dot J E A N hyphen F R A N C O I S at dot state dot F L dot U S. You may mail written comments and questions to the project manager. Jude Jean Francois at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542, Deland, Florida 32720. Or you may also call the project manager at 386 943 5487 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours after the public meeting. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting.